I wake up every morning three and a half hours before I'm due to clock in. This allows me to stick to my carefully structured morning routine. I meditate for an hour, using that hour to separate myself from earthly troubles. In my mind, there exists only peace and prescription. Then, I spend the next hour simultaneously reading both the BNF and the drug tariff to maximize efficiency. The final hour and a half, I dedicate to my hair. Actually, my morning routine tends to look a bit more like this. Okay, love you, bye. Hi, my name's Addy and I've been working as a community pharmacist for Daylouis for coming up to two years now in September and I have the pleasure of being the pharmacist manager at a lovely little branch in Salford. Salford's a little village situated just outside of Bristol heading towards Bath and I'm lucky enough to live only a 15 minutes drive away from the pharmacy. 15 minutes that can turn into plenty more when you're stuck in this most days. So I make sure to leave by 8am at the absolute latest so I don't end up being late and I'm proud to say that this means that I have never, not once, ever been late to work. <laughs> uh, so as you can see it's a beautiful Tuesday morning. I was off yesterday so this is the start of my week. There it is, the beauty, as you can see off there in the distance. So we tend to fluctuate between 5,000 to 6,000 items a month here at this pharmacy. Meanwhile, this traffic light tends to fluctuate between taking about five seconds to five minutes to turn red. I swear every time I'm running late, which is never, I don't know why I said that, um, or it's raining, it takes forever. But when I'm actually early and it's lovely, it just lets me walk on by. So it's time to head in. Uh, I can assure you I do know how to unlock a door, it's just that I'm just beginning to realise how difficult it is to record and do other things at the same time. Okay, so we're in, just need to get the alarm. Shut up. So the first thing I always try to do is to sign in as the responsible pharmacist. Then I put up my notice so that everyone knows the boss is in. As you can see, doing this one-handed is quite the challenge and I didn't have anyone to help me film at this point, uh, nor apparently did I have the patience to actually wait a few minutes for them to come in. Okay, time to grab a mask. Thank you very much, COVID-19. Fortunately for you guys means my pretty face is no longer gonna feature in this video. So uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's every pharmacist, but I subconsciously panic every time that I can feel that the CD keys aren't in my pocket. So the next thing to do is to grab those keys. Uh, watch as I realize that showing the unlock code for the safe on camera isn't actually a good idea. So I do a quick scan just to see if there's any blue scripts due for the day, because it's good to get those out of the way nice and early. Uh, so these blue scripts, they're the prescriptions for patients who are currently undergoing treatment for addiction, uh, be it alcohol or opioids, for example. Uh, you can have pharmacies who have over 20 patients who come in daily, or you can have pharmacies that have none. It just varies depending on the area. So we've only got a couple of patients here and none are due today. So my agenda is definitely a bit clearer for the day. Uh, I also sign into the computer in the consultation room so that it's ready for me to provide services or to look up the patient's records. Say for example, I'm in the consultation room with one of them. And then I'll pop my smart card in so that I can access the NHS spine as well, which is where the prescriptions will be issued. Uh, who's this preface on there, huh? 
Before the influx of patients get in, I do like to be up to date and in the know. And to me, that means firstly signing under Farm Outcomes. Farm Outcomes is the platform that NHS 111, as well as plenty of GP practices, used to refer patients to community pharmacies. Uh, then it would become the pharmacist's task to contact the patient and deal with the referral appropriately, uh, be it through helping the patient directly, through self-care advice, or the sale of a medication, the provision of a PTD, or if we can't help, uh, then we can refer or escalate them to the appropriate healthcare provider. So I can see that there are no outstanding referrals, which is great, it means we're up to date on any that came through since I was last in. Next, I want to sign into my NHS email uh, so that I can open the pharmacy's NHS inbox. Uh, folks, if you don't use your NHS email to sign up for discounts immediately upon receiving it, then you are missing out. The pharmacy's NHS email is where the GP surgeries and other healthcare providers will also contact us about various different matters and also send through uh, GP CPCS minor ailment consultations. So it means that it's an important job to keep an eye out on it throughout the day. I can see that there aren't any unread emails, which is great. It means I can breathe a, uh, breathe a sigh of relief, as I know my colleagues have kept on top of things. And speaking of those colleagues, let me introduce you to them, because today we've actually got a full house. So with us, we've got Wendy, who's the most experienced member of staff. Alison, who's also very experienced. We've also got Abby, who's recently finished her apprenticeship, so she's now a proud, proper pharmacy assistant. And this is Chloe, who's the newest member of the team. She's just started her apprenticeship about a year ago now. And surprise, we've also got Freya with us, who's a pharmacy student from Bath Uni going into her final year. Uh, we've also got our delivery drivers, John and Lucy, who come in during the afternoon to deliver our prescriptions, but sadly I didn't capture them on camera. <laughs> Uh, so I'm not exaggerating when I say that my staff are truly great to work with and this pharmacy in the local community would be far, far worse without them. The majority of my day consists of, drum roll please, checking prescriptions. Surprise, surprise. Wow. So this would involve me checking the prescription itself to ensure that the dosages in the medications are correct or with reasonable adjustments and that the prescribed quantities are actually appropriate and the prescription is legally valid. Then I'll check what my colleague has actually dispensed to make sure the medication, its strength, the formulation and the supply quantity matches that of the prescription, as well as making sure the medication is labelled correctly and in a manner that the patient can actually understand. Unfortunately, Latin isn't a part of the general curriculum anymore, so terms such as omni main or omni nocte are lost on most people. Lastly, I also make sure that the medications are still in date or won't expire during the time frame. When the shop gets busy, you'll also see me popping out to help serve patients at the counter. You'll also see me leave on several occasions to see a patient who wishes to speak to the pharmacist. Uh, this was a fairly common occurrence back in the day, by which I'm referring to a time before COVID, if you can remember such a thing. God, I sound so old. Back in the day, patients who had minor ailments or medication queries would pop in to see the pharmacist. Nowadays, with how difficult GP appointments are to get, you'll get all sorts of people coming in. Oh, I even answer the phone, how good am I? closing time so I'll pop the CD keys away so they're safely stored sign out okay I'll set the alarm lock up the shop and head home you locking me in 